review. Uh, this one is for Bibbs44, uh, who I got in touch with. Um, he's a uh, father of two, only has about two hours a day to uh, uh, to play on Overwatch, so he's uh, just looking for a little bit of advice uh, that I can give him. His, uh, his times and I don't line up exactly, so he will not be in Discord with me, uh, but I'll be happy to provide uh, any, any question and answer feedback uh, after the fact. Uh, and I'll be sending this video to him after uh, after I've completed it. So um, he is playing Zenyatta. Uh, if I have time, I'm also going to go over some of his other videos, um, looking to comment on his Hog, Diva, or 76 play as well. So I'm going to go ahead and play this one. And I think he's also got a uh, rather open and sensitive mic, so there might be a little bit of uh, sound echo on it, on the gameplay here. Uh, so let's skip ahead to where the stuff actually begins. People are calling for 222. Play here you're good at. 222 does no good if people can't play their heroes. Yeah, I, I hear. Yeah, that's that's a good that's good advice. Um, typically Zenyatta is not the best at, at solo healing. Um, but if you can manage it right, it's not too bad. Um, but you are right that it is. You are right that it is better uh, to have people playing what they're comfortable with, rather than uh, playing heroes that they're not good at just to fill uh, to fill the comp. Um, I've I've seen plenty of people uh, that are that are forced off of what they're actually competent at playing into a, a hero that they have very little experience with, and it, it doesn't go well really. So really, it, it is better for people to play what they're good at. Um, I mean, I've seen, even at bronze level, you can have 6 DPS work just fine. Um, okay, so, hang on, let me, let me back up right here, see where your, uh, your harmony orbs went at the start here. Um, yeah, so you put it on Reinhardt, that is a, uh, that's a good idea. Keep the, uh, keep the harmony orb on the tanks as much as you can. Um, because the, uh, the tanks are the ones that you're expecting to take damage. Uh, so if you have the harmony orbs on them, uh, then they'll immediately start healing up, and they have a big amount of health that they can heal up. So that is that is going to be a very uh, consistent uh, source for your ult charge, um, and then switching it off to um, to the squishies when they actually need it uh, is better than keeping it on the squishies and switching it off to the tanks when they need it. Okay. And you're discording discording tracer. She was the only really target you could see, though. Okay, now uh, right here, uh, the majority of your team is pushing up on on the left in the middle here. Um, you've got you've got three three people down here, one up top, uh, and then your junk rat is right here on your uh, on your right, fighting with that reaper. Um, now see what you were doing. You're backing up to uh, to avoid the diva rockets. Um, and then you've got the uh, the reaper up there. It's just tagging with the junk rat. But it would have been uh, would have been better just to go straight to your junk rat where you where you are right now. Um, you can still block the line of sight from the diva uh, and get to get to junk rat because by backing off all the way, you're leaving the other three teammates up there. And while that normally wouldn't be bad if you had uh, another healer, remember you're the only only healer, so you need to keep yourself. Uh, in a line of sight of, of as many of your teammates as possible. Uh, it does look like your Junkrat needs needs healed, and by going all the way around here, that really delays the time it takes to get get to him. And now uh, you can see your Reinhardt just went down, uh, even as he as he fell back, uh, where you might have been able to get to him. Uh, Junkrat did survive it, fortunately, uh, but Reaper could have gotten gotten a hit on him at some point. Okay, now looking at your looking at your positioning right now, nobody's paying attention to you. But if you look, you are closer to the um, the hallway from the enemy's approach. If they didn't go straight for the point and they just came up the stairs, they they'll be right on top of you, and you won't be able to won't be able to see them coming because you're not you're not looking. Um, you've already lost both your tanks. Uh, I believe you've gotten you guys have gotten a couple kills though, so it's uh, kind of even right here. Looks like your Reinhardt's back in the fray. Yeah, and it's a good idea to, uh, to put the put the Discord on the Reinhardt right there. Uh, just because it looks like... Let's see, you had it on the Tracer. Right there, and Tracer... Is, or baby, was that Tracer or Baby Diva? One of the two, but it was on a small target. Um, 
And the problem with putting Discord on small targets is that they're they're hard to hit to begin with. Um, so if you have if you have the Discord on them and then you're spending a lot of time, let's see if let's see where that where that starts and how much time you spend. Okay, so you put Discord on it right there. Now all this time, it could have been on the Reinhardt. There, she finally went down there. So all that time, it could have been on the Reinhardt, and he could have been uh, taking more consistent damage, because larger targets are going to get hit more often, so your Discord Orb will really spike that um, that damage up. Um, if, a, if a squishy target gets hit by one thing while they've got Discord on, if it's a powerful shot, then yeah, they'll go down right away. But what you want with Zenyatta is uh, the consistency, the um, the long game, I guess. You don't want to uh, to be bursty. Uh, you want to you want to be the long game, the long heals, the long uh, long damage uh, over time is uh, as much damage as you want to put out over, as you can put out over time. So yeah, putting uh, putting this cord on Reinhardt right there, he's a much easier target to hit. Your entire team's going to be able to melt him right there. And yeah, now you want to get the discord on the people that are being marked as critical. Um, discord on Diva might have been uh, better right there. Mercy is is going to be quick to take down anyway. Um, Especially with Zenyatta, I have a hard time landing shots with Zenyatta, and when I do, they look masterful and very well aimed, but it just doesn't feel like I have as much control over them. So shooting at bigger targets is, is usually how I feel better uh, playing Zenyatta. So putting the Discord on the Mercy, while she is a uh, a good primary target, putting it on the Diva uh, sort of forces Mercy to uh, to heal back that damage uh, and puts a lot of pressure on Mercy, leaving her leaving her open for other people to attack if they decide to. But really, you're going to be able to out-damage Mercy's heals if you have Discord on her. If Discord is not on them, then yeah, people... If, if somebody's attacking Mercy's heal target, it's going to be very difficult for anybody to take them down. But if you have Discord on them, on, on the heal target, that makes it a lot easier for the rest of your team to just take them down one, one thing at a time, and Mercy just feels a lot of, a lot of pressure to try to keep people alive. So yeah, switching over to Diva, that's good. Okay, now hang on, right there, I could hear it. Um, you got like like I said before, you got somebody that came up the stairs. It was the Reaper. I heard him shooting uh, even before he killed you, uh, and I actually saw caught a glimpse of him uh, right back there. Let's see if I can pause on the right frame. It was like it was only a, a couple frames here, but you can see the on over there. Then there's the uh, there's the Reaper uh, over here. Uh, that was that was your chance to uh, to notice where they were. If you'd been on the other side of this, closer to your spawn rather than theirs, you still would have had about the same visibility, but you would have been able to see targets coming at you uh, from that side. Um, and because Reaper's able to close this distance, he can take you out in one two hits. Yeah, so uh, just just positioning awareness from where uh, where your team is, where the enemy spawn is, where they're going to be coming from. Um, but otherwise, you're uh, you seem to be doing uh, doing a good job of prioritizing the heals, prioritizing the discords, and your team's probably probably best to fall back right now because you've lost your only healer. People look like they're uh, continuing to trickle in though, and yeah, that was a good idea to back up and wait for wait for your team to uh, to spawn in. Uh, now right here, I would have said put the put the healing orb on on Reinhardt, even though he's not taking any damage. He's taking a tiny bit, and you've only got five percent left uh, to your to get your ult. Um, it wouldn't have really made much of a difference, but if they, if a couple people decided to then take advantage of Reinhardt sleeping and jump on him, uh, your healing orb would have been uh, available right then. Okay, so you got uh, your, is your tracer coming back here, and you got Discord on a on a target with low health, all right now. But moreover, you're supporting one character, while the rest of your of your team is attacking the point. Um, so if you're, if, especially if you're the only healer, it's better to stick with the bigger portion of the group uh, rather than going off to uh, to help one person. Uh, then you, yeah, then you have that uh, that nano boosted tracer right in your face. It's a it's a good thing she didn't decide to um, to come ruin your day. Uh, but yeah, while you were over there doing that, your Zarya uh, died on point. Uh, it looks like your Reinhardt has sort of fallen back a bit. Good dodge, right there. Now you've got your you got your ult here. I wonder where uh, where you're going to use it. Um, judging by the enemy's comp, if they had a Zarya, that would have been a great uh, great thing to hold it for. But um, uh, I think the best way to uh, to use your ult here is going to be to wait for a uh, 
wait for like Reaper to ult or something, uh, or wait till you see that uh, that coming, or wait for just an ult that has uh, like consistent damage over time. Um, there's no Pharah on the enemy team, but if if they had one, uh, good ults to not uh, good times to uh, to wait for Zenyatta's ult would be like Reaper ults, Pharah ults. Um, if there's a Zarya ult, that is the best time to use it, uh, or if Soldier ults, for example. Um, so I'm just I'm just curious to see where that where that gets used, and uh, let's back up here. So you're you're kind of um, let's see, your team's over here on the left, and you're kind of back up here. You're you're on the edge, on the fringe. Uh, so uh, I would say right here is a good time to go back down uh, this tunnel right here and rejoin the uh, the center area of your team. Like I was saying before, you want to see as many people on your team uh, as possible, since Zenyatta's orbs rely mostly on line of sight. Um, that Reinhardt's right in your face. You're now, at this moment, you're the frontliner, which is really not where you want to be uh, as Zenyatta. Um, it's a good thing you uh, backed off from there. You got Reinhardt in the back, but you see now you're kind of cornered. You got, uh, once you once you move right there, you got Tracer on one side, you got D.Va on the other, um, and your team's not really in any position to, uh, to take the heat off of you. Okay. Good thing your Reinhardt came up there to uh, bail you out. Uh, okay, there it is. Um, so well, let's just see where this looks good. Okay, yeah, you're moving moving within your within your team. Um, it didn't look like your team really needed a lot of healing though. I'm not I'm not sure how much healing you actually got out of that. Um, Looking at your, yeah, your Reinhardt's pretty well topped off. Your Tracer just died, so you're not getting any heals there. Um, and you might have kept your Reinhardt alive uh, for a bit there. Um, but probably would have been would have been better to wait for uh, your team to be at a point where everybody needed some heals. Or if you're starting to feel overwhelmed with the, uh, the healing responsibilities, like you're not able to put out enough heals uh, for everybody, that would have been... Um, good time to good time to use that ult. Uh, I think the only enemy ult you really have to uh, worry about is Reapers, um, but I think your your team was doing okay without uh, without you having that ult in there. So, it's, um, and and good ult timing can also mean the difference between victory and defeat. There's um, there's like just just one misplaced ult. Like now that you've used that, Reaper knows that he could jump in with his ult, and he doesn't have to worry about yours blocking it. And he, I haven't I haven't heard him use it yet. Um, let me back up again. Yeah, you want the healing orb on the Junkrat. Yeah, and now you want it on the Reinhardt. Good. And that and that was one of those uh, one of those lucky shots I was talking about. It was like it, even when I'm playing when I'm playing uh, Zenyatta, I don't have the the lead time down. Um, and I mean at, at in early tiers, uh, it's it's hard to imagine that somebody has uh, Zenyatta's aim. So masterfully, you can take out small targets like that easily. Um, but barring other options, that's probably a good idea. Well, what is attacking you guys? Oh, there's Tracer. Okay. And yeah, since she was the only, t she right here would actually have been, um, if if the enemy team was still engaging, uh, you know, as you had your um, your Junkrat's low, your Reinhardt's low, uh, your Zarya's kind of low right there. If the enemy team was still engaging at that point, that would have been a good time to use uh, Transcendence because people need the heals and you're about to get attacked. Uh, for right now, though, it's okay to just use your use your orb to heal up steadily over time. Junkrat really needs it right there. Um, there, you, yeah, okay. Yeah, it gets gets everybody freshened up for the fight. Run the orb on the big targets. Oh, avoid that. Yeah, good job. Okay. Yep, and let's see. Yeah, you do plenty of damage to Mercy without the the orb on her. So yeah, Zarya needed it. Oh, good one! Wow, that was that was a good kick in the face to Tracer there. Um, yeah. So, and and Reinhardt, it's always it's good to get Discord on Reinhardt whenever you can, just because when he has a shield up, he he can't be discorded. So when you take that window of opportunity, that really opens it up for your flankers to uh, to take him down. But yeah, Zarya really needs the uh, the healing orb right there. It's good to keep it on her uh, until she can get her own shield recharging. And and uh, right there, instead of uh, charging up your uh, your orbs, might have been better to put, switch over the healing orb to Reinhardt. 
because he really needed it right there. It might not have made much of a difference, uh, but he was he was low on health. Okay, so right now you lost your McCree, you lost your Reinhardt. Enemy is coming in strong. Uh, this would be a good time to try to drop back. I don't know if this Reinhardt's going to let you because he's kind of right in your face and can easily chase you down. Um, but this this fight is kind of kind of lost at the moment um, since you've got a nano boosting Reinhardt. Um, you've got two people that are down. And you're doing you're doing pretty well as far as um, as far as heals, medals, and everything. I mean, you've got you got gold e limbs, uh, so I mean you're you're balancing out the uh, the duties of healing and doing damage, and being that uh, that discord support. But yeah, see now because uh, Reinhardt is now charging in ahead of everybody, he's probably going to get uh, picked out and staggered. Uh, so you, it's gonna it's gonna take even longer to get your whole team together. Okay, he and he fell back. That's good. He stopped advancing. All right. Now, even though McCree has the um, the purple anti-healing on him, if he's the only person that has a low health bar, it's okay to put your healing orb on him. That way, as soon as the purple wears off, it'll it'll start healing him right away. Ooh. All right, now you got that. You got the Ana right there. Uh, the Ana does not seem to be paying attention to you, though. You can, either, yeah, you can either discord her and hit her in the back, or you can keep your discords forward on the big targets uh, to support what your team is attacking. Either way works. Right, right now would be a, uh, an okay time to move in with Transcendence because you got, you've only got Zarya down. Well, you got your tanks down, uh, but you do have two people in there that are uh, that are low health. I think you have you taken out. Hang on, have you taken out anybody? This fight is the question. Okay, you're you're down McCree, Reinhardt, and Zarya, so never mind. This would be a good time to regroup. Because uh, I don't think you've you've gotten any any enemies down on this fight. Okay, so you got Ana down, you've lost your tracer, you're you're now four people down. Um this is the the perfect time for you and Junkrat to back up. Because I mean, they can they can kind of push up on you without without anybody without any fear of losing anyone because you don't have a lot of support with you. Um, that Reinhardt's back; he can put up his shield. Um, and I and I think I think you're saving your um, your ult for the last push, which is a good idea. Uh, it's because you'll you'll want that to keep your people alive on the on the uh, contesting. Oh, very nice. Yeah. Now it might have been better saved for when people were low or when your entire team was there. And yeah, there went the Reaper ult. That would have been that Reaper ult would have been a good uh, good thing to save Transcendence for. Yeah, if you were alive for it. Um, but yeah, I think I think holding the Transcendence a little bit longer until people actually needed it uh, would probably have served you a bit better. Because you want to you want to think about how much healing you're actually going to get out of it. Um, think think about the numbers really. Uh, if there is a big damage ult that's about to come out or that is coming out, you're going to heal that up and it's going to really uh, really boost it. You don't want to you don't want to do this preemptively. Uh, because if you uh, if you use transcendence before something happens, uh, then they will they will stop what they're doing and they'll wait until it's over. Then they'll hit you. Uh, but if you transcend while people are already at full health, you're not getting a whole lot of return out of it. So you did keep that Rhine up. That was good. I mean, it uh, it countered the Rhine ult pretty well, but there wasn't really anybody following up on on Rhine's uh, on the enemy Rhine ult there. You've taken out Diva. You've taken out Anna. Hammer went down. Yeah, it looks like Re uh, Reinhardt was the only one really going in on it. And he died, and then Reaper went ahead and used... Oh, that was Reaper's ult, actually, that, that did that. Let's see. Um, I think... Let's see. Was it Reaper's ult that killed you? Yeah, so you've used your you've used your ult, and that's when Reaper knows that he can use his without fear of you blocking it. Um, so... What what I would have uh, said a better a better um, series of events here 
would have been Reinhardt ults. You wait right there. Reinhardt's going to come up. He's going to get a couple hits on somebody. But as soon as people need heals, that's when you pop the transcend and bring them back up. Bring them back up to full. Rather than just blocking the damage from the beginning. And yeah, you guys lost that that fight. So. Yeah, the Reaper pretty much wiped you out. So that that transcendence is best held for uh, for the Reaper ult. Oh, and somebody left your left the game. Oh, that is that is never fun. Um, I'm pretty sure we've all had that happen. Um, if he doesn't come back, I mean you're you're pretty much gonna lose because you're five v six now. Um, not much not much more to say about that. It sucks. Uh, yeah, all you, all you can do is keep a positive attitude, try your best. I think 5v6 wins about, like, 8% of the time, so who knows? You could get lucky. It's good that somebody swapped to uh, another healer, but you are going to be kind of strapped for damage. Um, I think you're only running one tank. Yeah, it was your Reinhardt that left. Uh, and it's good that you have your, uh, your healing orb on the tank. Uh, you want to be in there with your team, though. Um, you're kind of at the back here, so if they have any, if the enemy has any stragglers, they could come up behind, uh, behind the team and get you. Yep, just like that. There it went. Um, so in watching where your team goes, as soon as a couple people go through the door, uh, so actually, as soon as all, like, since the, your entire team is in there now, you're out here, and it's going to be easy to, uh, to be caught out. So you kind of want to move in there with them, with them. Right there, yeah. Since you were you were a little late getting in there, so the McCree was able, or the soldier was able to pick you off. And like you notice how how open and easy of a target you are when he came around the corner. So, um, yeah, and since you're the main healer, you do want to keep line of sight on your on your team. Okay, you're moving a bit far ahead now. You kind of want to wait for your team to uh, to group up because that soldier could easily have gotten you. This tracer might get you. You don't have a lot of backup right now. There you go. Now they're in front of you. This is where you want to be, at the back of your team, um, with, like, still close to them, not, like, not like way back at, uh, from them, because uh, you still have that tracer on the left. You don't want to get uh, get caught out by her. Um, okay, and it looks like you're going, okay, you're going, you're going around to the left when your whole team is going around to the right. Uh, I understand that you got you got killed going around that way last time. But if you go this way, you're breaking line of sight from your team. If you come under attack, they can't help you. But moreover, they're not getting your heals. Um, Zenyatta is not a flanker. He's sort of a backline, uh, long range support. So you want that's where you want to be is in the backline. Okay, and now that your team is there, now that your team is there, that would be a time to move in. Uh, into the point and get with them, because uh, right now you're still still sort of off by yourself. Nobody can really support you over here. Uh, you can only really see Zarya, and that's only if you peek in. Um, so yeah, this this is a time where you want to rejoin your team, reunite with them, because they're they're kind of getting picked off. Uh, you're and going back to the point about small targets. Zenyatta has a hard time hitting small targets, and here you are with two of them. Uh, this could very well, yeah, that went wrong. So, um, yeah, that so your team wiped. I don't know if you would have uh, made much of a difference because again, you are down, uh, down people. Um, I did notice uh, just a moment ago you brought up your uh, your medals, and boom, you've got you've got the uh, the gold damage medal, um, which is somewhat shameful for the rest of your team because you have a junk rat on your team. So I don't know how that is that is happening, but um, clearly you are doing a better job doing damage than the rest of your damage dealers. Just saying, you're you're doing okay this match. Uh, just some just some positioning things uh, where you went around you went around a different way than the rest of your team. Um, you are doing a good job of hitting the big targets. Uh, like when you did flank, you targeted the D.Va rather than going for the small targets. That's more time that you have putting down sustained damage because if you're going for small ones, you spend most of the time missing. And every now and then you get a pick. So right there when you decided to prioritize the baby D.Va and the Tracer, you were missing a lot and you end up dying. It's not an accuracy thing. It's just those are harder targets to hit. I mean, 
anybody's going to have a hard time hitting them. So the bigger targets are better better priorities for you, uh, for your Discord and for your shots. Good job of getting the Discord out on him. And yeah, now you're actually moving with your team. They're there to support you, you're there to support them. Okay, you've got the Transcendence ready. Your McCree wasn't with you. He was killed by a Genji, which sort of tells me that there is a... Um, there's a Genji on your right, somewhere in there. Uh, now you've got this uh, this tracer bomb coming at you. Okay, this is a great time to pop Transcendence right now because that is going to kill you otherwise. No. Okay, and you had two people that were uh, that were yellow on health, so that would have been yeah, like let's see. Here comes that Transcend. You can, I think you, I think it, uh, no wait, it doesn't heal through walls, but that would give you the opportunity to go, uh, go in and heal them and keep your team in the fight a little bit longer. Uh, and it would have kept you alive too. Uh, your Junkrat just took down, uh, two people, but their Mercy ulted and countered everything. Um, just a little nitpick here. Going up these stairs is sort of the long way to where you want to go, because then you have to make like this 90 degree turn. And then this 180 degree turn to get to get to right here, which is if you had just gone in a straight line, you could have gotten here. Just a little nitpick. Faster routes uh, get you back in the fight in the fight sooner. Okay, and you're back at the front line now. There you go. Yeah, you want to be behind the team. Oh, you guys have two um, two picks now. You got the Reinhardt and you got the Mercy. Um, I really wish you were with your team right now because you could really help them capitalize on it. Now you want to transcend, yeah, so that that uh, Diva bomb doesn't kill you. Uh, Diva is going to be a better uh, better target for your defense matrix. I for, not for your defense, matrix, your uh, your Discord orb, because Lucio, small, mobile, hard to hit, and the entire time he's alive, he's healing back the damage that your team is putting on Diva. Uh, so, um, as before, if you have a healer healing another target be it a tank, a DPS, anybody. You want your Discord Orb to be on the heal target because the healer is going to be harder to hit uh, and the Discord Orb is going to really put pressure on the Mercy because she's going to have a hard time keeping up with the damage that's coming in as a result. And there's the there's the Reaper ult again to finish off the match. He seems to like saving those for the end. So I don't think he's used those... He's not used that ult in the middle of the match at all. He's, it's always his finishing move. Um, so yeah, after once your guy left the match, that defeat was kind of inevitable. Um, not a whole lot you could have done about that. I think you guys did fine on the first point. Um, let's see how you how you ended up with uh, with medals. Okay, so you you didn't keep the damage medal, fortunately. So you're. Your, your damage did kind of pick it up a little bit. Looks like your Junkrat had some really good uh, multi-kills uh, in there. But uh, So the takeaway from this, you want uh, to keep your healing orb on the tanks by default. Switch off to the squishies when they need it. Keep in sight of as many members of your team as possible, especially the ones that have your orbs. Uh, Discord priority should be the big targets um, and the targets that are being healed. Uh, so as to put pressure on the enemy healers to keep them up. Uh, now, even if you you discord a target that's being healed and your team doesn't go for them, or a few people go for them, but that's basically your uh, the enemy healer having to focus longer on one target. That's time that they're not focusing on other targets. Um, and then, yeah, pri that's that's the priority for discord is um, heal targets, big targets, and then whatever's left. Probably DPS and then healers last, actually, are the ones you want to focus down last. Uh, if your team is uh, coordinating to take down a Mercy, let's say you have a uh, Soldier 76, for example, and he is, he's like the, the healer killer. If he is actually going for the healers and you know he is specifically targeting them, then it's okay to discord the healers because he's got a more precise damage and he needs to hit them multiple times. Putting discord on squishier targets at that point is okay. Uh, if you have a D.Va going after somebody, a D.Va on your team going after someone, putting Discord on that target makes D.Va a lot more effective as well. Uh, so targets for the for the multi-hit sustain, those are okay Discord targets as well. Uh, in general, big targets, though, are going to be your best thing because that'll, that'll really 
um, but for both healing and discord. That'll really boost up your ult. Uh, and it's all about building up that ult so you can have it as many times as you can. Uh, as far as when to use the ult, use it when you need it. Uh, when a Zarya ult comes through, or Reaper ult, or Pharah, uh, or a Hanzo ult, actually. Hanzo ult is really good to use it use it for. Um, if you have the, the Zarya grab, and then the Hanzo dragons come through, if you have just a Zenyatta ult in there, it just negates the whole thing. You get a ton of Transcendence healing. Um, and let's see, if you look here, you got, you got 15, about 1,500 Transcend heal. Uh, and I think you did Transcendence either three or four times somewhere in there. So that's uh, that's about 500, uh, three or four, three or 500 uh, Transcendence healing uh, per per Transcendence, basically. You want to try to maximize that by doing it when people need heals, when you feel that pressure that you like you can't put out enough heals for the damage that's coming in, you can Transcend to block it, or if a big ult is coming through uh, that you need to block, that's a good time to use it as well. Now, the enemy, Ana, kind of worried me, because Ana can just throw her grenade into the middle of that. Um, so if you if you have enough focus to pay attention to it, try to watch for when Ana's grenade goes out. Because if the grenade if the grenade goes out, wait for the purple to wear off, then you can transcend it. You know she's not going to nade in the middle of it, because that is the big counter for Zenyatta's ult, is one of Ana's cooldowns. So if you can monitor that cooldown to time your, uh, your ult, to prevent hers, her, uh, her grenade from really messing you up, then that's good. Uh, but if you if you can't spare that attention, that's all right as well. It's just it's just bronze. Uh, but something to potentially learn down the road. Uh, so I'm gonna look at one of your other videos. Yeah, I've got I've got plenty of time here. Uh, let's see. Let me go. On, let's just go back to this, and I'll just go to your go to your channel here. Let's see what other things we got here. Um you got Zenyatta, you got, let's see. Well, you got you got a couple. Uh looks like you got an Arissa and this a you're not playing Widowmaker on this, are you? No, you're playing Hanzo, okay. And then Widow. And Zenyatta. Okay. And this is and this is uh elimination, so that I mean that's that's not really the same thing. Um, I can't give as good advice for elimination because I really have no idea what I'm talking about if I do. Uh, let's, Hi guys, let's see who you're playing on this one. <laughs> Hello. Uh, so Hi let's guys. see here. So let's play a game. And... Uh, is this another, yeah, it's another elimination match. Okay. Well, I guess all I can do is just watch this Arissa video. Um, even, even though Arissa, even though Arissa wasn't one of the, um, wasn't one of the heroes that you uh, you pointed out to me, uh, but you got to fill the time somehow. So uh, let's see what we get here. Oh, there we go. Uh, what does it say? No, you got to stand have, the car and then hold jump. Yeah, and I have looked at this video, so there is a bit of him uh, talking to his kids. That's okay. I I I understand that if you have if you have kids, they need your attention as well. Oh. Um, so I believe you were playing Arissa on this one. Yeah. What are you getting? Can you put your cups Let's away in your food first? Here. Oh, what's the comp like? Okay. Uh, so, yeah, you've got Ana solo healing. Um, you've got some people that are they're a little self-sufficient. you got Soldier and, uh, and D.Va and Tracer. Um, so Ana solo heals might not be too bad here. Yeah, Anna, Anna can put out some decent healing by herself. <laughs> I really hope that. I hope, I hope that opens. Okay. Because the first thing I can see is that the Reinhardt shield is right outside. They are just set up for yeah for you to just lay into them right at the start. The jumping one. So that's good. <laughs> Yeah, and it, that's a good job of prioritizing targets other than what Reinhardt is shielding. Because uh, when Reinhardt has his shield up, if there are people that are not being shielded, then, yeah, why why would you shoot the shield if you can just do direct damage to, to people's health? So that's a good idea. Oh, and the, they have a Symmetra. What? Hold on. Okay, now, with Symmetra, 
uh, she was she was around the corner and then she just like ran out in front of you and she's doing that little jump thing. She's a hard enough target to hit as it is. Uh, so that would have been a good time to use your um, little miniature grab thing, your halt, I believe is what's called, your right click, uh, to stop her from running away, pull her back in. Because early in the game especially, Symmetra is a very high value kill uh, because if you don't kill her early on, she'll get a teleporter up. If you do kill her though, she has to make that long walk back before she can even continue uh, her progress towards it. So Symmetra is good to kill really early on. Yeah, I probably probably would have could have stood to use that earlier and just frame her right in the middle there for your team to kill. What? Um, okay, let's see. Let's look back again one? when you started taking damage. Okay, so you're about 300. You got healed up. Yeah, your shield was in a good spot. Right. Hold on, Nugget. Okay. Alright, so you're at 280 health, you're taking damage now. Okay, so now that you're at about half health, that was the exact time that you should start hitting uh, hitting fortification. What? And stay behind your what shield until you get healed up. I don't know what your healer was waiting no, for. It's I, don't know if, I don't know if your Ana was still alive right there. Oh no, your Ana was dead. Okay, so if you notice in the kill feed there, uh, uh, Reinhardt got your Ana with that fire strike. Um, so that would have been uh, probably the opportune time to pop up the uh, the fortification and step back, not uh, back into the thing, because they're right. they're keeping you pretty well it? at bay right there. And when your only healer is down and you're at 35 health, there's not much coming for you. Uh, and you've got that that healing zone back there as well. Uh, so if they're going to push this close to your spawn, make use of that healing zone. Uh, it'll it'll take pressure off of uh, your healer and allow you to get back in the fight quicker than if you no, just die and respawn. Almost. It's got a little bit in it. It says jump and hold X to hover over gaps over the bridge. So when you jump, hold X so you can float a little bit. Okay. Oh, here comes Reinhardt. Now's the time to use... Yep, there you go. I was going to say, if, if he didn't die from that, halt would have been a good thing to use right there. Halt right here as well. And yeah, okay, that was good. She was close enough and in your face and wasn't using her dash uh, dash around to avoid you. Uh, but yeah, if you have small small targets that like to move around a lot, Halt is really good to get them to stay still for a little bit and allow you to, uh, to focus some shots into them. But uh, yeah, you got some good headshots in there. And yeah, shield on the payload, good idea. Good kill. Their Junkrat was just trickling in basically. He was off by himself, didn't look like he had a lot of health left. Oh wait, no, that was McCree that got him. Sorry, that you got. Yeah, it looks like it looks like some of them are just jumping in your face with not a lot of health. Uh, so that's good that you're that you're singling them out, making them pay for it, and punishing them for it. Uh, yeah, I heard Symmetra behind you. I don't. Yeah, she's she's really trying to trying to build up that teleporter. So now you got that widow shooting you. Yeah, it's a good idea to get behind that shield and stay behind it. Yeah, so if you've got a widow shooting at you, especially on this map, this this map has very big open lines of sight. Uh, with Orissa, you can put down that shield on the payload and just stick with it and keep moving with it and just shoot up at at her. Uh, you don't need to break from that cover uh, to see her. And then yeah, you've got you got that Zenyatta trying to flank. So yeah, your your enemy team, the enemy team is really uh, trickling in and just going off on their own. So you're, you guys are doing a good job of making them pay for it. Okay, so it sounds like the Symmetra does have a teleporter up. Um, not really something that you have to worry about. Uh, that'll be that'll be a job for your tracer really. Then jump and then hover. Your tracer is down, so. So yeah, your tracer is down. That is uh, the only person that's really going to be able to deal with that teleporter, um, unless they put it in a very bad place. Um, yeah. And yeah, the junk ride just went straight for you. Not a whole lot you could have done about that, uh, unless you had fortification available. No, you did not. I, I think it was on. I think it was still on cooldown. Oh no, you could have. All right, so you're full health here. It says smoke dash, circle, and then hover. Yeah, so press you've got fortification the dash, available. Then jump and then hover, and you float. So you can hear you can hear the tire coming. 
This would have been a great time to pop fortification, uh, especially as you hear it getting nearer to you. Yeah, just hit fortification right there, and then his tire might not have killed you. And if it did, it would be off cool. Like fortification would be back off cooldown before you need it anyway. Oh man, their widow's off by herself again. Oh. Okay, that is something that is very underappreciated is when you have a Mercy respawning and you actually go back a little bit so that she can jump to you and that gets your healer back into the fight uh, a lot quicker. That was that was actually very good. Um, not That's something that we, you don't see a lot from uh, Bronze players is that, that awareness that Mercy uh, needs, needs people to taxi to to get back in the fight a lot quicker. Uh, your DPS is down though as well as your other tanks so this is probably a good time to wait for the rest of your team to catch up before you move in to engage. Uh, you've lost, yeah, you've lost Tracer, Soldier, Junkrat, and D.Va just before you get there. So this is a good time to back up. If you dive in right now, you, think of it this way. Your Mercy's getting a res, but if the entire enemy team is there, how long is that really going to last? Um... So yeah, it, it probably would have been better to wait for the rest of your team to just respawn, get back in there. Um, only this time, when the Mercy respawns and comes back in, uh, she's she's going to have her cooldown active. So yeah, there goes you, there goes Soldier. I heard I heard a Mercy ult go out. Was that your Mercy ult, I wonder? What? I can't tell. Yeah, oh, yeah, okay, it was your Mercy's ult. Your Mercy used her ult right there. She didn't really have anybody else that she could res. She was going to get pretty pretty wrecked. Either that or she's not going to be able to do much use on her own. She got the soldier back up again, it looks like. Okay, oh, you have, you have a D.Va. So D.Va can deal with the teleporter as well. Uh, and let's see, you've taken out their Symmetra, Teleporter, and Junkrat. So this is a good time to just sit on the payload and move with it. Put that shield up, yep. And Zenyatta's off by himself. Yeah, if you have trouble hitting anybody, just use Halt on them. Oh, wow. Good job of moving forward through the shield to use it from the other side. Good idea. And then, yeah, their soldier's down, so now you move back into the cover and just keep moving forward. Yeah. Okay, when your barrier's on the back end of the payload like that, it gives you your, your team a lot smaller area to, uh, to stand on. It might have, uh, you might have realized that as soon as you put it down, it's like, okay, not everybody can fit on here. Somebody's got to jump out. Not, every, not everybody's going to float on this rowboat, all right? We've got to draw straws. Somebody's got to jump out. <laughs> okay, and with the, um, that would have been a good time to halt the Symmetra's advance. Uh, when she's coming at you right behind her shield, like she's using that as her way of getting close so she can lock on with her beam. When she's doing that, you can fire your uh, your halt through it to get, get it behind her and pull her back away from it, putting her at a range where your team can engage her after the shield passes and she can't quite reach you yet. Uh, so that would have been a good time to use halt right there um, to, to literally do what the ability says, which is halt an enemy's advance. Right there, a halt would have been good. Yeah, you still got her anyway. Cause she was she was charging by herself into like four of you, so that wasn't gonna work for her in in the first place. If she had some backup though, if she had people coming in from the side, or if she had other people with her, then she might have been able to do to do some damage. Uh, but because she was off by herself, you uh, you punished her for it. She wasn't able to do it. Oh, good pull. And he's okay. He decided to move forward instead of uh, instead of rejoining his team. So that was good. Oh wow, nice dodge. That was that was a great dodge uh, of that of that thing. So the McCree after after being pulled out should have gone back to the left in there and, and rejoined his team because he's off by himself in the middle of people. He's got enemies on all sides basically. Uh, even though you have lost your uh, your tracer. Gosh. Okay. So he took out your mercy, your soldier. And your and your Hanza, their Hanza took out uh, your tracer. Your diva's out of mech. He's still like soloing the team though. So I mean that was that was very risky on his part to dive out there like that. And your junkrat's there to help you. 
That was and that was just a really good dodge right there, just moving through your shield. And now you want to put another shield back up on the front of the on the front of the payload here. Yeah, there you go. Um, so your healer's not with you. I don't think your healer was uh, was there with you. Uh, and you knew the Hanzo was still was still back there, because if we if we look. Oh, it finally ended. We look like here. You got you got the McCree pulled back. The Hanzo is what killed your uh, your tracer. So you knew the Hanzo's in play back here somewhere. So yeah, Hanzo. I think I think I just saw an arrow from him uh, go in front of you. Let's see if I can. Let's see that again. Where is it? Okay, so Hans. Okay, so you were just shooting at Hanzo, and he went through that uh, through that door right there. Okay, so when Hanzo went through that door, you can assume he's either hiding on the other side or he's coming around behind you. Now you're still the only person uh, here, pretty much, except Junkrat, because remember McCree had just taken out a bunch of your team members, and there's a long walk back. Um, you got Soldier with you, but yeah, Hanzo, Hanzo came around behind you, and you didn't have a whole lot of support there to cover your back. Oh right, it's not a, it's not such a long walk back. So I guess your team was in there a lot quicker than I than I thought. But still, the Hanzo caught you out by yourself. So you just want to be be aware of where your team is and try to make sure you're with as many of them as you can. Uh, if you're out in front, outnumbered by the enemy, they're probably just going to swarm you and kill you or come around behind you. And that's and that's what happens. So now your whole team is back. You're all here together. It's all good. Shield is good to put up. That was a good time to put up that as well, because you got uh, that enemy down there. You got the Reinhardt that just charged in. That soldier down there healing himself up. Um, that's actually a good idea to uh, let him come to you, because while he's down there, he's not doing much. Um, that is, that's going to be up to a flanker to go down and get him, because uh, you can't really uh, do as much uh, as much damage to him because not, not because uh, your your attacks are weaker, but because he can jump around. He's a smaller target to hit, and you're a big target. And soldier can put out a lot of damage on big targets. Um, I would have said it would just be better to to move with your team. And yeah, see, he, he he drew you into where he had support on the other side there. So probably would have been better to wait for him to come to you. Uh, hopefully your mercy can get a res on you there. Okay, there it went. Um, so yeah, now the soldier's pushing in, and that's when that's when you get the kill on him. Good halt, good fortification. Uh, don't know where the rest of your team is though, because you spent a lot of time on the floor. Um, yeah, it's been a lot of time uh, dead right there, so I don't know what uh, what's really going on with the rest of your team. Looks like you killed their junk rat. And I can't really see the uh, the kill feed because okay, so. Let's get an analysis of what just happened. Uh, their Hanzo killed your Junkrat. Junkrat killed Hanzo. Then Soldier killed Tracer. So they're down Hanzo. You're down two DPS. Uh, so it looks like and, uh, they took out your, um, or sorry, your uh, your little bongos got uh, got taken out as well. Either that or they just expired. So you've got you've got Soldier with you. Uh, you've got Mercy. Your mercy just went down. Soldier's got tac visor, so it's good to good to take him out. Um, at this point, you've got the Zenyatta above you. I'd say it'd be good to put down a shield, just because that'll that'll still cover you from above, uh, and that would have given you more survivability uh, against him. But at the same time, you've also got people behind you. So I mean, that, they were just sort of all around you. I think your most of your team was uh, was falling back at that point. Either that, or they're still pushing the payload. Are they pushing the payload? You got somebody pushing the payload up there. Uh, the issue is that they're not back here helping the team, and they're about to get swamped themselves. Who's pushing the payload, I wonder? Okay, looks like it was Soldier. Yeah, it looks like your Soldier was pushing the payload by himself, and you really could have used his help back there. Uh, sometimes it's okay to get off the objective a little bit in order to win the team fight and then come back to the payload as a uh, as the a full group freezing. to That's push while you have that advantage. It's winter, so that's, the water's got tons of ice in it. Different game. 
Okay, so it looks like a bunch of your team is uh, is going like they're it looks like they're looking down on the on the lower part over here. Um, and yeah, that tracer was going to use that to come around this side. So it's good for you to uh, to stop the tracer from flanking around and getting somebody that way. Um, and yeah, that allowed your whole team to uh, to move around this way too. So that was good. Now you got somebody behind you. There's the there's the tracer again. Yeah, it looks like you guys have won this team fight. You guys just mopped up a bunch of them. Yeah, sorry, this is a long, longer video than I thought. So yeah, while you're while you're facing off with that tracer back there, your diva got two kills. Uh, your diva's back up. Yeah, you got you got their Zenyatta, their Hanzo, their McCree. Looks like the does the enemy even have a tank? I don't. They've got an Arissa, but that's about it. They don't have another tank. Isn't it nice how much ammo Arissa has? <laughs> All right, so yeah, good job. You guys, you guys won that last team fight pretty handily. Let's see how the defense goes. Oh, playing Zenyatta on defense. Perfect. I can keep reviewing your Zenyatta. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, by the way, if you do uh, post any uh, Diva, Hog, or uh, 76 videos the, of the for the heroes that you wanted me to uh, to review, the ones that you want to specialize in, um, let me know. Upload those videos, and I'll I'll be happy to do uh, more reviews like this for you. Offering follow-up support. Ooh, it looks like your your guys are way out in front. That's that's the mistake the enemy team made. Basically, you want you don't want them to be able to use their spawn advantage because if you guys die up here, you have a long way back to walk. If they die, they spawn like within eight seconds. They're back on their feet and coming back in your face. So uh, you want to um, you want to be safe on this first area. When the enemy has a spawn advantage, you want to be as safe as you can. Keep him on the first point as long as as long as you can. Ooh, so yeah, you want to keep him on the first point as long as you can because the um like the closer you get to the end, that's like as you get to the end, you have the spawn advantage. Then somewhere in the middle, it's about even. Uh, and you you want to keep that uh that spawn advantage in their favor as long as you can, because later on when time actually matters, that is when you have the advantage. So you're doing okay. You're you're up where you need to be at distance. Uh, however, your team is uh, sort of pushed up in front, right in their faces, and so that widow is just able to go over top of them and just get an easy pick on you. So that's sort of your what? Uh, sort of your team's fault for for being all the way all the way up in their face. Uh, I don't know. Hop over those. Because if they had been back with you, they could have seen that widow, and somebody else could have gotten like. Put some pressure on her, like your soldier. Yeah, your Symmetra's down. Do you have so. to fight your way through? So yeah, you're not going to get that uh, that teleporter really early. Okay. And yeah, good good for putting your uh, your Discord on the big targets. Uh, you want the you want the big targets to be healed right there. I'm sorry, you want the big targets to be discorded, you also want the big targets to be healed. Uh, you're kind of by yourself right now, uh, so by flanking around behind them, you might get a couple uh, lucky hits, or a couple surprise hits, but they're going to turn on you and melt you really, really fast, and that's going to stagger you for the next team fight. meaning it's going to take longer for your whole team to get together because they'll be waiting on you, because you were the last one to die. Okay, good hit, good kill. But they have the spawn advantage still. Uh, Fair is a very difficult target to take down in Zenyatta. At least for me, I've seen people that look like they're extremely proficient with it. Usually when I'm playing as Farah, I find those Zenyattas on the other team. Yeah. 
Oh man, so all this time, all that time that you were spending uh, shooting at Mercy, you could have had the Discord on the Orissa and been taking her down. So. Um, let's see. I have, to, I have to take smaller, smaller clips on here. So, yeah, right here would have been better to move to the left in general. It, I mean, it, you were lucky that you got that uh, that Farah. Um, but you want to try to get your team back together for another team fight rather than individual picks. I mean, a pick like that is good if your team is then there to follow up on it and take out the rest of their team. But if it's just you back here, you get a pick. It seems like you're doing your job, but the enemy team is going to, like, they're going to respawn right away. And then you're going to be, your team's going to be at a disadvantage just because enemy team has the spawn advantage. You want to you want you want it to be about the team fights, not the individual picks. So yeah, right here, I would say it would have been better to put it on Arissa cuz Arissa doesn't see you. Mercy's hard to hit and then Junkrat's able to use that that time that you're taking to come up behind you. Yeah, so they're they're still pushing the payload because your team looks like they're kind of trickling in. They're not waiting. Like it's it's become a, a one kill at a time game, and in that case, they're gonna win it because they have the spawn advantage. So you want to be with your team as much as you can. If your team has already lost the team fight, that's a good time to fall back. This is a great spot to be in, but again, you want to be hitting the big targets because those are the ones you're gonna have an easier time landing shots on, which is equivalent to you actually putting damage out. Yeah, see, I mean, you, and you got, it all it All it takes is that one lucky hit to get a pick, and that was a good pick on Mercy, um, but in that entire time that you were you were taking to try to hit the squishies, you could have had a discord on a big, on a big tanky target, and, uh, and you and your team could have been, could have been working them down, um, and that, would, again, would have been more, more pressure on the healers to keep them alive, because that's consistent damage that you're putting out. Uh, the payload has already reached the point here, so at this point you're still fighting them at their spawn. Um, it's, it's really not worth it to uh, to try to push them off the payload when they still have the numbers advantage. They're still picking you guys off one at a time. That's it's it's still a good time to just fall back, regroup, so you can all hit them at the same time when they're farther away from their spawn. Is it beatdown time? Oh yeah, that was a that was a lucky lucky rocket too. Okay, switch to road dog. All right. Cool. Uh, yeah. Okay. So yeah, you guys have you guys have two healers uh, already. You've got you've got the uh, the mercy and the Symmetra. Did you have that at the beginning? Let me, let me see. This is 13:43. Uh, so yeah. Okay. So the, yeah, this whole time you've been running three supports. Um, the Symmetra and Mercy is really enough returning power uh, that I don't think you really needed the Zenyatta. Although if you were gonna pick a third support, Zenyatta is a good one just because he has that additional damage output in the Discord. Um, but yeah, Symmetra Mercy is really all you need as far as support. Uh, switching to a third tank, also not bad, because Roadhog is essentially, essentially a damage because of his hooks and his, his, uh, his damage that he does. Um, so yeah, you're really relying on Soldier for your range damage, though. Enemy has a Widowmaker. Um, so, I mean, let's see. Yeah, if, if the enemy has a Widowmaker... A shield would have been good. Looks like your Symmetra's doing all right. Your team is up there, though. Your team is in there. You've got three people up there. You can th see the little chevrons there. Um, and you and your Diva are kind of waiting back here. This is this is the time to push in, because your Symmetra's got uh, got a kill on one of their tanks. Symmetra went down. You got their Orissa down. That shield right here isn't really protecting anybody. It doesn't need to go down. You can just push forward, rejoin your team, and actually join the team fight. Um, in the in the higher tiers of, of play, the team fights are really uh, really what the game centers on. If you watch the Overwatch World Cup or Overwatch League or any any high high tier uh, gameplay, it's it's all about one team fight after another. There's not a lot of like trickle in and get one kill at a time, uh, like you see in the lower tiers. It's all about coordinating the team fight. So there is a team fight going on up there. It's best for you to get in there and join it, rather than take down that, that shield. 
Now, Roadhog can't really protect anybody. He's sort of there to just survive on his own, take the damage in, instead of having it go to other people. It's good that you have the um, the shot melee combo. Um, let's see, did you did you make a shot before you did the hook though? Let's see what happens here. I need to watch it again. Okay, so shoot, and then uh, then there was sort of a gap like shoot, hook. What would have been what would have been good is in that time right before you hook, if you do another shot, it's like shot, then shot hook. They're getting hit, then they're pulled in, then they get another hit. You're putting an additional shot in there that could do more damage. Now, if that's if that's a squishy, that is the difference between killing them and not killing them. Okay, so now your team is wiped out. You've lost your Zari, lost your soldier, nobody else in front of you. This is the time to back up. Yep, back up. Okay, so now you run, you just take a breather. Oh, okay, so it was almost off cooldown right there. Uh, when you have to take a breather, it uh, it he, it reduces the damage you take by half. That's your your E, your self heal. I don't know if it was off off cooldown in time. It might have been. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hit it. Okay, so maybe not. But little tip with uh, with Roadhog is if you have if there's an enemy diva ulting and you're able to hit that take a breather. If you manage to get yourself up to full health, or, or at least close to it, while that is active and the Diva ult is going off, you're not going to die from it. It's not enough damage to take you out at full health while taking half damage. Effectively, 1200 HP. It's not enough to not kill you on that. So, just to think, you know, same thing with Junkrat ults. If you, hear, if you see a Junkrat ult coming for you, try to get its attention, try to run towards it, and hit that take a breather as you're doing that, because it won't be able to kill you if you're at high health and taking half damage. Okay, it looks like your Mercy tried to dive in for a res, or just got caught off on her own. And that's going to that's gonna stagger the team. Again, good job of you waiting for her, but if the rest of your team is engaging, it might be good for you to be up there with them. See, now you've, yeah, you've lost your Soldier, lost your Symmetra, your team's just, just trickling in, staggering like, uh, like crazy, so... Yeah. Yeah, good to not engage right now. Uh, that's just unfortunate. Yeah, this is where your team really needs to engage. You're the one. You're in the right position right here. And now take a breather and move. Take a breather and move. Heal up. Heal up. Oh, please heal. Please heal. Please use that heal. Look at your health. You're at 91 health. Oh, dang. Okay. So, let's see where you took that damage. It was after they came through. Okay, so here, that's where it was. All right. So, you've got to take a breather off cooldown, pull him in. You just took a big hit, and you can see the red bars like going crazy over here. So you like you know you just got a big hit. They've got the damage buff over there. Uh, they they can see that you're at low health. This is a great time to just pop that heal and move back because you don't have any you don't have a team fight going on right now. You want to stay alive so you're not staggered. I understand you want to take that diva down. Right here would have been a good time to uh, to to use that. Don't try to finish off the uh, the baby diva in this case, especially when she has her whole team supporting her, um, because really it's actually better for her to not be in her mech form because she's not able to do as much. She can do some ranged damage, but really it's not a lot. Um, what I do when I when there's a diva in a team in a big team fight, if I get her out of her mech. I'll like I'll just call to my team like Diva out of mech, and I'll just ignore her. I will let somebody else mop her up because if you're especially if you're Roadhog, a small target up close is going to be hard to hit. Small target at range is not going to take a lot of damage. Uh, so this would have been a good time to just leave the baby Diva alone. Don't worry about chasing her down or finishing her off, and hit yourself heal because you've been at low health for gosh, let's see it was. Right here at about five nine five eighteen that you took that. And you died at 527. Okay, so, you, yeah, you could have used it and then had it off of cooldown again by the time you died, uh, almost. So, uh, just just so, just try to be aware of your health and your team's positioning. There was no re real need to press that, that fight because you're sort of at the front. 
you're the only person that the enemy has to target, so they're gonna target you. Oh, you got a teleporter now. I wonder where Symmetra put it. That's oh, okay. So that's a very oh man, that was a very poorly placed teleporter. Um, not like not because of its location. It's I mean it gets you back in the fight quicker, so it does that. Um, it's not gonna get destroyed where it is, so there's that. It could have been a little bit closer to the fight. Maybe maybe uh, if Symmetra had put the teleporter at a bit more risk. It could have gotten you guys back in the fight. But everything in on the interior of this level it looks the same. So because she had the teleporter turned around, I saw that D.Va got confused, you got confused, you run all the way back to spawn before you realize what's going on. And in, in the long run, just sort of makes things worse for your team. Um, yeah, Symmetra just ran up and put it down facing the payload. Um, this is not... This is not anything to do with you. This is uh, this is a Symmetra thing. Uh, but if you ever Symmetra and you're you're putting down a teleporter, people are going to come out of it the opposite direction that you're facing when you put it down. So face away from the objective or away from where you want to want them to come out. Put your back to what you want them to see when they come out of the teleporter. That'll save time. That was unfortunate. Fortunately, it doesn't look like it changed a whole lot. Potato clock for us. Yeah, and uh, Diva is going to be your uh, your target of choice here. Uh, big targets will take more damage from your spread fire. Um, so it probably probably would have been optimal to stick stick with that Diva just to knock her out of her mech again, get her in her her less effective um, her less effective mode, for us. so somebody else can deal with the small target. Oh yeah, and Diva was like one one shot from being knocked out of her mech. Okay, Soldier it's was able to get her minus at least. Two hours or no? What did I say? Plus. Okay, now you got that widow on the upper right shooting down at your Diva. There's not a whole lot you can do to protect her, but you can try to hook the widow because she's probably scoped. She's scoped right now. You can hear the um, the shot as a single shot rather than an automatic. So she's clearly scoped, which means she can't move around as uh, as much. Because of that, that would have made her a prime hook target. Two hours, minus two hours. If nothing else, you might have been so able to body block for Diva. So what time is it now for us? All right. So it's 10 a.m. for them. Use your health. Use that health pack so you you've got your uh, you take a breather on cooldown for when you need it. That's good. I would say now is a good time to use take a breather. You're uh, you're down around half health. Um, not a bad time to use it and get that cooldown going so that um, Saturday when you might need it again you can use it. No. Okay. Oh yeah, that was okay. So that was a good time to use uh, use the ult to push them away from the from the payload. Good kill on that widow. Um, I didn't see a lot of targets when you used your ult, but then as soon as you um, actually came around, then uh, I could I could see more on it. So Saturday. So that was all right. It wasn't too bad. Yeah, I didn't didn't see a whole lot of targets there, uh, but you did get the one that was pushing in. That Farah, you can hear the Farah ult, and when she does that, she sits still. So that would have been a good opportunity, maybe to just turn around and uh, shoot up at her a little bit. Uh, but there's no guarantee that you'll hit her with your uh, with your ult. You do put out a lot of damage with your ult though, so it's good that you're, you're focusing on a big target as well. The farther away that Arissa gets, though, the less damage you're going to do with your ult. So, might not have been uh, good to keep pushing like that. Cause you kind of you kind of got caught out. You were sort of in their in their lines. Um, it's it's it was sort of hard to hard to notice that really. You didn't even notice until you were. I didn't even notice until you were dead. Uh, but yeah, you'd kind you'd kind of pushed a little ways past their front line. And yeah, this guy's asking why put the teleporter there? Why not shield? Which is a good observation because you guys have the spawn advantage. You don't really need a teleporter. A shield might be better. I uh, saw so what you were, you were trying to do, trying to catch the Orissa before she could get behind her shield. And that was a good thought. Uh, but in the meantime, while you're waiting for that, you might have been able to hook the Mercy. You might have put some damage on the Mercy. And that might have helped the, the fight in the long run. Oh, we're going after the Widow. 
I don't know where the widow went. Okay, now is a good time to use your heal. Yeah, there you go. And it looks like you guys you guys are holding this fight pretty well. You just took out uh, their Farah. Their Mercy is really the only one that's left. And if you've got hit scan, then she's going to go down pretty easily as well. Okay, take a breather. Yep. Good use of the good use of the heals uh, in this in this phase of it. You've got your entire team here. You've got three tanks. You've got a lot of survivability right now, so you're probably probably going to be all right here. Oh yeah. Okay. So by moving in there, all right. By moving in there, you did take some of the heat off of uh, off of your allies. Uh, if you had when you have your uh, your heal up though. It probably you probably actually could have like pressed on down there a little bit more just to be the tank to be that that tank role and take more more of that damage um, so that they don't put it out in front of your into your team because you've already taken out their mercy their divas out of mech you took down their tracer they don't have a lot left so you can you can take a few more hits you can hit the um, you can hit the take a breather and walk into them a little ways just to throw them off balance take a little bit more of the damage for yourself there's a fine line there because you don't want to stay in there too long. They do still have a junk rat, and that is going to do a significant amount of damage. Maybe hop in there, hit, take a breather, just to soak up some more damage, and then hop back down. I don't know how necessary that ult was, although it was lucky that you that you had it up for that tire. Um, but it looked like the enemies had fallen back, so that ult might have been wasted if that tire had not come through for you to take out. <laughs> It was a good thought, though, because that was the last place you had seen them. Uh, okay, so the Pharah just wiped out three of your team members. You got two tanks and one DPS down from that. Uh, your soldier had taken down their D.Va, but Mercy just rezzed her. So they're about to come in uh, full force. Um, so yeah, you, it's, it's good, for you to, uh, good for you to heal up right now, just because they're about to charge in. Uh, and yeah, you're going to want to like stall on that payload as long as you can. Uh, now, when doing that, when you're stalling on the payload, you want to use the payload to block line of sight from enemies as much as you can. Because if you're off right here where you are, if all the enemies are on the payload, they can see you. There's nowhere you can hide. But if you're on the payload sort of moving circles around it, they, they'll have a hard time keeping up with you. You might have half the enemy team that can see you at a time. Uh, so that's, that's a better stalling technique is actually staying on the payload. Uh, and, and using it as your line of sight. It looks like there are five enemies on the payload right now. Uh, I think your Zarya just blew her ult. Uh, so that would have... That, okay, so that would have been a really good time to save your ult for uh, for the Zarya. Because Zarya holding them in place while you just nail them at point-blank range, the, more, the closer you are to them when you ult, the more damage you do. So if you have something that's holding them in place, that just allows you to just go ham on everything and just trash them. Um, so yeah, you might have you might have let that uh, that tire go through. There's no way you could have known that was coming through anyway. Um, but I, I would say if you if you had that clairvoyance and knew that the tire was going to come through, and it was either use your ult to take the tire down or use your ult to follow up on the Zarya grav. I definitely would have said go with uh, go with the Zarya grab. So because you have a Zarya on your team, and you can check their uh, the ult status uh, in in the um, in the tab screen, you can see when people have their ults, uh, or you can you can press Z to let people know that your ults are up and coordinate it that way. Uh, because you have a Zarya, I say it would have been it would have been worth it to wait for the Zarya grab to come out before using your ult. Just let her be the signal uh, for when's a good time to hit yours. And you might have you might have mopped up their team right there. Oh gosh! So they've got you guys are running four tanks right now. They've got Zarya, Reinhardt, Diva, uh, and Roadhog. Um. Yeah, I think I can't freeze it on the right frame here. There we go. So yeah, you guys have four tanks right now. You got a lot of survivability. Um, that Ana is going to be having a heyday. She's got lots of big targets to shoot at, to heal up, and everything. Um, so yeah, when you when you know your comp, you know what what ults will work well together. Uh, if you've got the Reinhardt and the Diva, for example, 
the Earth Shatter with the Self Destruct works really well. Graviton Surge with Self Destruct works really well. Graviton Surge with Roadhog's Whole Hog, that is just oh, it is godly. How much damage you can do if you're if you're in the right position to use it. Even if they have a Rhine Shield up, you'll do enough damage you can melt practically melt through it. So yeah, when you have a, gra uh, a, a Zarya on your team, or just anybody, just look at your team, see what alts work well with each other. Roadhogs works particularly well with Zarya. Alright, so we're coming up on the last team fight here. Basically, if you wipe them, you've won. If they wipe you, they've won. This is, yeah, this is the time where there's no more time to team up and group up. This is where you want to just be up in their face. Good job using Linus. Oh, never mind. Okay, so yeah, you had you had the big flashing indicator that uh, Diva's ult was going off. You had the payload there to use for line of sight. You were in a you were sitting pretty. You were in a good spot. You even had your um, your self heal that you uh, that you could use right there. It's good that it didn't kill you right away, but you still died soon thereafter. So. Yeah, the payload will provide you line of sight. Even if the hover even if it's hovering off the ground, it'll block you from being killed by this thing. So it would have been much better to just stay behind the payload. Yeah, and use that to to survive. Oh. Yeah, it's unfortunate. So yeah, if you're your, your people are still trickling in, fortunately. You've got a couple kills. And now going back to what I was saying uh, before, you've got the spawn advantage now. The enemies had it at the start. You've got it at the end. So this is where you guys, your guys can trickle in. It's where you need to trickle in. There's really no no time to wait for, for a team up. Um, but yeah, you've gotten their D.Va. You've gotten their Tracer. It's looking pretty good because they have a much longer walk back than you do. Yeah, good hook. That's going to be it. Yeah, you, you've got them. Looks like the Mercy was going in for a last-ditch effort. But, yeah. Good job. Yeah, and they're, they're, yeah their Pharaoh was doing, was doing pretty well. They were getting, getting good hits on people. Oh, and the double environmental... Oh, she was just making sure nobody came to save the Mercy. <laughs> oh, no. I am the salute. Oh, man. Okay. Uh, so, to recap, uh, when you're... Gosh, yeah, so you were running, starting, starting with Orisa. Um, the halt is good to halt people, to stop them from getting close. When you've got close-range enemies coming at you, you can use that halt to pull them back. Um, you want to try to be aware of like where your team is to make sure they are there to support you. Because uh, even if you're a tank, if you're at, at, the, at the front and by yourself, you don't have your team with you, that's not the time to push forward. That's the time to fall back, regroup, and make it about the team fights. Um, and let's see, as Arissa targeting, um, when, you're, when you're going for small targets... Halt is a good way to get them to stay still as well, so you can focus them focus them for a briefer brief moment. Um, Zenyatta, uh, again, you want to target you want to focus the the big targets for both Discord and Harmony for the most part. Um, putting it on the big targets make sure they makes the makes them take more more sustained damage over time rather than uh, the burst damage that you would get from putting it on the smaller targets. Um, and same thing with uh, with your your tanks. They're the ones that you expect to not always be at full health. If they take a couple hits, your your healing orb is going to gonna start healing them right away. The smaller targets, the healing orb is not going to make much difference within the span of a second or two. Um, so you do want to keep you you want to switch to the small targets when they need it, but in general keep it by default on uh, the tanks on the big targets. Uh, I don't know if you even got a chance to use Transcendence uh, as Zenyatta. I mean, it, was, it was a long match, so I might I might just not remember it. But, um, but yeah, you want to wait until uh, until until you really need it. Uh, and then you switch to Roadhog. You did you did really well as Roadhog. 
Um, yeah, and you you were, you were doing that self heal in um, with good with with good placement for the most part. There was just that one that one span of time where it was like a whole seven or eight seconds where you were low health and really needed the heals uh, and didn't get it. But uh, that was just uh, isolated incident for the rest of the time you were healing up as uh, as needed. Um, just remember the uh, the ult synergy. Because you had a Zarya, that Roadhog ult would have been great to coordinate with it. Uh, when you hear the fire at will, that is the um, your friendly Zarya using it. If you hear uh, if you hear the uh, the Russian, I don't I can't do exactly what what it is that Zarya says, but uh, when she when she does the Russian line for it, that's an enemy ult. When she does the fire at will, that's the friendly ult. Um, so you wanna you wanna coordinate those the best you can. Like if you're on if you're on Diva, if you're on Roadhog, if you're on Soldier 76, basically anybody that has damaging ults, those are great to coordinate with Zarya. Um, so just keep an eye on uh, on the tab screen, see when Zarya's ult is up, uh, and that'll give you a good idea of when to uh, when's a good a good time to uh, to save your ult and when to pop it. Um, and then yeah, your hooks. Hooking big targets is good. Hooking targets that you know are going to be still, like small targets that are going to be still, are better. Um, it's hard to land a hook on a small target that is moving, but if there's a small target that you know is going to be still, that's a that's the that's a good uh, good target to hit because they're going to be easier to get. The big targets with the hook are going to be your your typical typical default. Uh, same thing with your shots. Basically, Roadhog is uh, just a fatter version of Reaper. Um, with his with his spread shot and everything, so big targets will take more damage from you, um, at at basically any range. Uh, small targets you're really only going to get more damage on if you can get them hooked and get them in really close and still for a moment so you can actually hit them with that. Uh, otherwise, I found this out in um, in free for all the other day. Uh, it was it was me and this Lucio just trying to kill each other. And I was getting trashed by him because I could not hit him. He was just running circles around me, quite literally, and I could not hit him because he wouldn't sit still. So, um, yeah, Roadhog, you're gonna you're gonna want to go for still targets. If anybody makes the mistake of sitting still around Roadhog, they deserve to be hooked. Otherwise, big targets are gonna be your general focus. Um, and am I missing anything? That's all I can. That's all I can think of. Um. But yeah, the, and the big overall takeaway is positioning. Make it about the team fights. Even if your team is trickling in, don't trickle in with them. Find the biggest group of your people and move in with them on that. Make it as much of a team fight as you possibly can. Um, I did like that you were staying behind when your Mercy had just respawned to let her taxi to you. That's That was very good, uh, very good uh, game awareness. Um, so if you have any uh, any questions about this, uh, let me know. Uh, you've got uh, we've got our uh, our our Reddit conversation still active. Uh, I will post this video up to YouTube. You can uh, you can watch it there. Just let me know of any uh, any questions. If you want any follow up, or if you have any more videos you want me to review, um, Bibs, just uh, just let me know, and I will be I'll be happy to follow up with you. Uh, I hope we can play quick quick play sometime. That would also be uh, that would also be fun if our times ever line up. Um, I'm like Eastern time evening most of the time, although I can do some uh, some play on on Saturdays and Sundays. So we'll see how things work out. Uh, I hope this was I hope this was helpful for you. Uh, if anybody else has any uh, any videos they want me to review, um, I've got got a couple people that have uh, that have expressed interest. But I'm going to try to keep my schedule as, as full as I can with this because this is uh, this is just really helpful. I think. Uh, for people, I'm I'm trying to give back to the people that need that need the most help. So. Um.